All right, folks, welcome back. Another beautiful day here. Nice fall day. Almost uh, too cold for a t-shirt, but it's still a little bit too warm to have a long sleeve shirt on. And I think today would be a good day to do the first big service on our 2501 tractor. So I got all the stuff together. I've had most of the oil and filters for a year or so sitting in the basement just waiting. I like to keep things ahead. I'll probably go buy the stuff for the next oil change first chance I get. So I went inside and I dragged out a bunch of tools. I did this the first time, to be honest with you. I can't remember exactly what it takes for tools, otherwise I'd have way less. But uh, we got to change the engine oil and the transmission hydraulic differential oil as well. It'll be the first time for that. I have changed the filters, never changed the oil itself. And uh, I'm about five hours short of being the regular service interval, but for those five hours, I'm not going to wait and do this when it's 10 below zero. <laughs> I'm going to do it now. It takes a lot longer than five hours to put five hours on one of these tractors. So at any rate, let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. I got, got my engine oil, my engine oil filter. This is a gear drive tractor, so it only takes one hydraulic filter. I've got uh, five, six, seven, almost eight gallons of Super UDT. I don't buy cheap oil. I buy, you'll notice, all Kubota filters. They are better. I don't care who says they're not, they're wrong. And the UDT, well, my tractor's still under warranty at this point. I want to keep it that way. My dealer did tell me that I could go ahead and run the uh, engine oil, mostly of my choice. I. I did ask him if this was okay, and he said it was, so I run uh, the Rotella T6. Uh, it's synthetic. Kubota's oil is not synthetic. Kubota's oil is regular old dyno oil. So the dealer, if you've got a good dealer, will tell you to go ahead and buy the oil that you want and always use that in it, as long as it's good oil. And uh, this is what I settled on for our climate and uh, temperatures that I run the tractor at most of the time. So anyway, I got some funnels, my grease gun, my manual, some cardboard to lay on. Let's see if we can get in some trouble. Some of you guys may not know this. It's all in your manual all over the internet and stuff, but a lot of people have these tractors and they never even open the hoods on them. So what you need to open your hood, the first thing you have to do is there's a little latch over here. You pull that and that lets your front rack come forward like this. All tipping this did forward was give this enough clearance so that the hood will come up. So if you reach down here, there's this little ring right here. You pull it, and up goes the hood. Just like that. I take off this little side panel. It's like 12 millimeter bolts, two of them. Uh, it doesn't cover much, but it, it gets in the way. I like taking it off. So this is your oil pan for your engine and your tractor. And as you can see, it's got two oil plugs in it, mainly because the sump has a channel cut in it that your drive shaft for your front end runs through. So you want to make sure that you, you get both of these drained out. Otherwise, you're not going to be getting all of your used oil out. Now, I'm going to warn you right now, oil coming out of a diesel is dirty. I mean, it's terribly dirty. It's worse than changing oil in any car. It is black. So we'll drain most of it out of this side here. Want to make sure we get our washer. Sometimes they come loose, so they'll stick to the to the oil pan. So here we go. There we go. That's running in good shape now. Things 
about these tractors when they're new is it'll, it has this all this thick gray paint all over it. So a lot of times your tools don't fit them real good. And you got to watch out for these washers. You want to make sure that those washers are still on there and they don't stick. And you get two on one side and nothing on the other. Because that could cause you a problem. So you want to make sure that everything goes back together with each plug having its copper washer where it's supposed to be. These don't have to be very tight. Just tight enough so they don't leak. You don't want to strip them out, believe me. I try to clean them up good so I can get a good look at that, that washer and make sure that it's not stuck to the bolt. Then I'll give this a quick little wipe. If you run your tractor a lot in cold weather and then run it in heat, you know, in the summertime, it is going to build condensation, so I don't know. Regardless of the hours, it's not a bad idea to change your, uh, at least your engine oil every year, at least once a year. You don't have to. You can go by Kubota's hours, especially if you keep it in a garage, something like that. Now I'm going to slide this pan right over here underneath that oil filter. I know that's going to make a terrible mess. And we'll go topside for the time being. But while I'm down here, I'm going to grease the, the pedals while I'm here. There's several grease fittings on your uh, little bell cranks for your brake pedals and your clutch pedals. They should be greased. Whenever you service, there's no reason not to. Makes your pedals work better. Stops them from squeaking. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change the engine oil filter. It's right up here on the right side. As you can see, I've got my strap wrench on it. This thing never fails. When everything else is stubborn, this always does the job. As you can see, that's all loose already. So I've got our new oil filter for our engine. I'm gonna take a little bit of this new oil. I'm gonna oil the seal up really good. That'll help it come off easy the next time. Okay, nice brand new oil. And we'll come over here and we'll get this old oil off from here. Make sure that there's no gasket material or anything stuck on there. And we'll spin this on. There. That is hand tight. Okay, so I'm going to use my handy filter pliers. And I'm going to put just a little bit more on this. A little more than I could get. Oh, let me get my hand through there. Hand tight. Just a little more. Maybe a quarter of a turn. Yeah. That should be just fine. That way we know it won't leak, we'll still be able to get it off. So if there's one thing I don't like about these tractors, and for the record, there isn't really much I don't like about them. This new style dipstick that they came out with is terrible. <laughs> I hate it. It should have a loop on it like the old ones. Uh, it should be in a better place. It's in a terrible spot to get at. It's hard to find. Look, it's way down here. And when you put it in, it just sits there like that. Now, you have to really know where that is to pull that out. And there's plenty of oil in it. I'm going to say we're good on the oil. So the engine oil change is complete. So we made sure all the plugs are back in. We know the oil filter's on. The only thing I have to do is fire it up and let it run for a minute. Make sure we don't have any leaks. So 
So now you're emptying the... I'm starting to drain the transmission, yes. All right. Drain transmission. Nice and clean fluid. Look how nice and clean that is. Hey, crossing the streams. Fancy. You're not supposed to cross the streams. I think it's okay in this situation. <laughs> I put the plugs back in and switch containers because yeah. this oil drain pan is full. That is full. This transmission actually holds more than the hydrostatic does. It's over uh, it's over seven gallons. It's almost seven and a half gallons. Oh wow. So, you know, that's what's in there. Okay. It's gotta come out. Now do these plugs have the washers in them like the other ones? So you gotta make sure that Yes, they're... but that these are these I checked, they're still painted onto the uh, onto the house and they haven't come off yet. Okay. You just gotta keep an eye on them, make sure you don't double them up because if you get two copper washers on one side it'll leak between them. You'll get right. another leak. Yeah, not good. And plug number three. This is for the transmission. This four out of. I hate going this way with a wrench, but I don't have to. I guess. <clears throat> These have never been out before. Ooh, that's a stream. It is. That. I got almost five gallons out of this already, so there should only be another two. I'm hoping that other one has most got most of it out because it's lower, but I'm sure there'll be some come out of here. Now this one only has one filter because it's a gear drive, so it's only got a hydraulic filter. It doesn't have a transmission filter. If you look at these filters, you'll see that there's this in there. Wow. It's a magnet. It catches all your particles from your hydraulic system. Oh. There's probably one on that filter too. I always save them because just in case you get one that doesn't have one. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get a finger full of that oil. You're gonna boil this up. Just like we did on the engine filter. Just like that. These come with a nice little cup over them and everything. Kubota filters really are great, right? I'm gonna spin that right on there. Get hand tight. <clears throat> and I'm gonna give it another quarter of a turn with the wrench. There. That should be fine. Transmission is now empty. This is where the transmission fills from. Uh huh. I don't want to get this too tight. There's all the uh, the oils changed in this thing. We've done the motor. We've done the transmission, transfer, rear end, 
the hydraulics, all that's changed. The filters have changed. I added a piece of tape, the H filter with the date and the hours, so I'd know when they were changed last. So, you know, God willing, I'll still be here, but just in case. And it uh, should be changed every 200 hours or so, I believe, from here on out. And I'll probably change the motor oil every year once I'm on a schedule. But I'm still, this is really the first big service. I greased it, of course, you saw and everything, but there's uh, a bunch of little adjustments that I have to do to the clutch and the, and the brake pedal. I've got to do that. And uh, all the other stuff, I've got to put an air filter on it. I'm going to do that later. It needs to be done. I don't have an air filter here right now. And uh, all that other stuff's all greased. I keep it greased anyway. All I have to do is just a couple little adjustments and I'll do those when I get the chance. So she should be all ready for another winter after I get a new uh, air filter in it. The fuel filter looks fine. Actually fairly easy to, to service. If you could service your 72 Buick, you can service a Kubota tractor easy enough.